Hello, my dear viewers. I would like to devote today's episode to probiotics. Probiotics are friendly organisms that live together with us in our intestines. They are a critical and essential element of our immune systems. There are innumerable benefits to probiotics. In a healthy body, they comprise 3% of our body mass. Thus, for reference, a human weight of 100 kilograms would generally equate to a 3 kilogram mass of cohabiting probiotics. This stunning figure shows just how important it is to nourish and support these friendly organisms through a healthy lifestyle and diet. Importantly, in the case of a deficiency, it is critical to keep these organisms alive and active through various therapies. Probiotics are used as preventative medicine in a wide array of illnesses. For example, probiotics are able to prevent diabetes, cancer, and various depression-related diseases. Additionally, they have shown efficacy in the prevention of autoimmune diseases and have a critical role in the production of essential human vitamins. Supplemental probiotics carry out these much needed functions through several manufacturing technologies that are worth paying attention to. One of these advancements is an important aspect of effective probiotic technology, breakdown resistant coating. Probiotic peels require enteric coating in order to pass through human digestive acids untouched. These coatings part of a unique technology called microencapsulation are needed because probiotics thrive and function in the large bowel. We suggest you choose probiotics that were manufactured with this technology. If this technology is absent in your supplements, we would suggest that you store your probiotics in a cold freezer, preserve their survival and prevent their dissolution from stomach acid and other foreign elements so that they are protected as they pass through the digestive system. We are able to consume probiotics both through supplemental and dietary means. Kefir and yogurt produced through healthy method aid in our consumption proper digestion of probiotics. Separately, a generally sound diet plan supports the longevity of these probiotics in the bowel, whether they were consumed artificially or through dietary means. Thus, the body requires that we nourish ourselves with these compounds or food protects known as prebiotics. Prebiotics support the existence of probiotics by ensuring an environment where they remain living and active. For instance, dietary fiber and sauerkraut are great examples of fermented and pulp-based products that provide a healthy environment to probiotics. I would like to re-emphasize this one thing. In general, it's quite difficult to gain maximum benefit from probiotics through supplements alone. This is why it is necessary to live a lifestyle that is true to our evolutionary fabric. Thus, choosing our probiotic sources from natural and organic products and keeping track of the latest scientific data behind this topic is extremely important. Both supplemental and natural sources of probiotics require special consideration. 
It is my prediction that in the future, these products will be tailored to the individual, not only in terms of the diet and complementary supplements, but also the schedule in which they should be taken. Our bodies already have a scheduling system at its disposal. It is called the circadian rhythm. The production and organization of bodily chemicals and hormones rely on this particular system. The nature of this rhythm changes from person to person, and we will be further analyzing its relationship with dietary and naturally derived probiotics in separate episodes. We will be discussing which probiotic strains you should select, what you should look out for when choosing the right probiotic and prebiotics that nourish friendly gut bacteria amongst their many other functions. Every strain of gut bacteria has a distinct effect within the gut flora. Thus, it is key that we picked probiotics that target our specific health goals. Which probiotic strains should I pick if I am suffering from diarrhea? Three specific strains of probiotics should be consumed when dealing with diarrhea caused by either rotavirus or other viral causes. Lactobacillus rhamnosus, Lactobacillus rotary, and Bifidobacterium lactis. Diarrhea that is brought about by antibiotic use can be treated through Lactobacillus rhamnosus and Saccharomyces boulardii with regard to radiotherapy-induced diarrhea, Lactobacillus acidophilus and Lactobacillus casei are suggested. In patients with histamine intolerance, probiotics that reduce histamine levels and prevent its increase are suggested. Probiotics that break down histamine include Lactobacillus plantarum, Bifidobacterium lactis, and Bifidobacterium longum. On the other hand, probiotics that prevent histamine from reaching dangerous levels include Bifidobacterium infantis, Bifidobacterium brib, Bifidobacterium bifidum, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, Lactobacillus gasseri, and Lactobacillus salvarius. If you are suffering from histamine intolerance, we would suggest you stay away from Lactobacillus casei, Lactobacillus bulgaricus, Lactobacillus rotary, Streptococcus thermophilus, Lactobacillus delbrocci, and Lactobacillus helveticus. Those who have irritable bowel syndrome would find remedy in consuming Bifidobacterium longum, Bifidobacterium infantis, Lactobacillus plantarum, and Bifidobacterium brevi. One of the best probiotics for patients with digestive ailments is Lactobacillus rhamnosus, which has an antagonistic effect against human pathogens and synthesizes quickly metabolizing, non-accumulating L-lactic acid at a much higher quantity in comparison to other bacteria. Similarly, two probiotic strains by the name of Bifidobacterium infantis and Bifidobacterium longum prevent D-lactic acid, known for being a casual factor in chronic fatigue syndrome, from accumulating in the body. All these three probiotic strains prevent histamine levels from elevating and are d acid inhibitors. What types of probiotic strains should we take to strengthen our immune system? Along with supporting red blood cell function, 
the three probiotic strains that support a healthy immune system are Bifidobacterium lactis, Lactobacillus rhamnosus, and Bifidobacterium bifidum. Probiotics also function as antidepressants by increasing tryptophan levels. Also, those with lactose intolerance can stand to benefit from probiotic strains that metabolize undigested lactose. These strains include Lactobacillus bulgaricus, Lactobacillus acidophilus, and Streptococcus thermophilus. In the case of bacterial vaginosis, probiotic strains Lactobacillus rhamnosus, Lactobacillus fermentum, Lactobacillus acidophilus are highly effective in stifling pathogen colonization while promoting their own growth. Probiotics are also beneficial to those suffering from high cholesterol. They reduce cholesterol by breaking down bile acids. Lactobacillus acidophilus is a great example of one of these probiotics. As a forewarning, immune deficient patients and those receiving cancer treatment should consult their doctors before using probiotics. Thanks for listening, my valuable viewers. We were able to see how detailed probiotics can be, including those labeled as general use. We have seen that we, they need to be used carefully and that they can interact with other substances. We tell our patients with chronic diseases that they need to be as careful with their probiotic use as they are with their other drugs. All suggestions need to be followed, including those on labels and those provided by experts and doctors. It is worth re-emphasizing the fact that those with histamine intolerance should be very cautious of these warnings. I hope we were of benefit to you with the information discussed in this episode. We wish you good health and hope to see you next time. We will talk about available facts, explanations all from the analytical perspective of a pharmacist. I hope this video will be useful to you. Please don't forget to share if you like it. Stay healthy and happy.